When I was just a kid, I lost my companion, my best friend. My twin brother passed away way too soon. We used to do everything together. We used to eat grapes all the time and spit the seeds in the backyard. Two grape trees grew from that, but only one survived. That really makes me wonder why. For a really long time, I felt a hole in the middle of my chest, a hole that no matter what I did, it never seemed to be filled up. Needless to say, that event changed the course of my life. And even though my brother and I were inseparable, we were completely different as well. He was extremely confident, and he was always looking for an adventure. Me, on the other hand, I was almost afraid of everything. But when he unexpectedly passed away, I changed. I began to be more confident. I began to search for adventures as well. I guess I was trying to compensate for the hole that he left behind. Unfortunately, the death of my brother was not the only thing that brought pain into my life when I grew up. My parents fought a lot, maybe because they didn't know how to deal with my brother's death. And when they finally separated and my dad moved out of the house, we struggled a lot financially. It felt like we always were not going to make ends meet. We had the electricity and water shut off more than once. And I remember the many times in the supermarket standing in line wishing that we could afford what was in the cart. You see, I grew up being used to pain. I grew up feeling uncertain about the next day. Since my brother left, pain for a really long time became my best friend. And that's what I want to share with you today, my pain, and how I turned it into my biggest strength. I want to share with you how I left home and everything that I knew so I could follow my dream of traveling around the world, so I could live a life that God and my brother would be proud of, a life that I would be proud of. I immigrated from Mexico 12 years ago. Since then, I lived in a couple cities. I graduated from college and worked in many different jobs. One of the biggest obstacles that I encountered along the way came as soon as I graduated from college. At the time, I found myself broke, homeless, with a gallbladder surgery that I was recuperating from and a pinched nerve on my back. When I was younger, I had two major accidents that impacted the rest of my life. One was a really bad car accident that affected my neck and eventually my back. And two, I had a really bad groin injury that affected the way I walk. And so till this day, every single step that I take, I have to think about it. So at the time when I graduated from college, I had no money, I was living in a friend's place, I was recuperating from a gallbladder surgery, and I could barely walk. I knew I needed to change, I knew I needed to do something drastic. So what did I do? I sold everything that I had, I gave away my clothes, and I flew to Spain so I can walk a pilgrimage called Camino de Santiago. A pilgrimage that entails walking from border to see the entire country of Spain, 500 miles. Now, I don't know why I thought that I was going to be able to walk an entire country if I could barely walk at all, but I did. And I don't know why I thought that the best thing to do at the moment was to walk across Spain, but I did. A couple, hours, a couple of weeks later, I flew to Spain, and I started walking. Only three days into the journey, I found myself with excruciating pain on my knees and besides my back. I was completely devastated. I knew my pilgrimage was over. There was no way I was going to do the pain for the next couple of weeks. I finished the day. I woke up the fourth day, and I told myself, just try it one more time. But this time, just focus on taking one step at a time. Today, don't focus on the pilgrim ahead of you going faster than you. Don't, come, don't focus on the pilgrim behind you going slower than you. Don't focus on the pilgrim next to you. Today, focus on yourself, on your path, and taking one step at a time. And that's what I did. I walked until I could not take the pain any longer, and then I took a break, stood back up, and walked until I could not take the pain any longer any, again. Before I knew it, I had already walked 14 miles that day, which was way more than what I thought I was going to do. And suddenly I'm walking, and I look up, and in front of me there's this massive mountain. You see, I forgot to look at the schedule, so I didn't know that at the end of the day I was supposed to climb a massive mountain. And I stood there and looked at it, looking at it for what it seemed like an eternity until I said to myself, you're already here. I started walking again, 
And the steeper it got, the more pain I felt. But I didn't stop, and I did it again. I walked until I could not take the pain any longer. A couple of hours later, I found myself in the top of the mountain, and it was a beautiful day. I don't recall the last time that I was as proud of myself as that moment. And I could see the mountains, I could see the valleys, and in the distance, I could see a little town, and I realized that I was that was the town that I was supposed to get to that day. And so I decided to keep going. But as soon as I started going down, I realized that going down was going to be way harder on my knees than going up. I took one step, and it was painful. I took another step, and it was extremely painful. By the time I walked 100 feet, I was in more pain than I've never felt before. And so I stopped. And I looked down, and I suddenly felt tears running down my cheeks. And then I said to myself, I'm not weak. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. And that calmed me down. But then, I'm strong, came out of my mouth. And that was extremely powerful. So I said it over and over again. I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. And then I took one step, and as soon as my foot touched the ground, I felt the pain, but I didn't stop. I took another step, and as soon as I felt the pain, I yelled out loud, I'm strong. And I kept doing that over and over again. I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. And before I do it, I was already at the bottom of the mountain. And at that time, I started bawling. Not because I was weak anymore, because I was thanking God for giving me strength to keep moving forward. This time, I was crying because I felt strong. And that was a new feeling for me. I, f I, fi I finished the day, and uh, 40 days later, I finally got to the destination. And I walked from border to see the entire country, Spain. And a couple weeks before that, I couldn't even walk. When I get back home, I spent a lot of time thinking about what happened in that mountain because it was extremely powerful. And I got really curious about, I did some research, and in specific, some science behind the pain. Science behind the pain. I did a lot of that. And so the first thing that I found was that pain is a survival mechanism to protect the body. So if you feel pain, it's because your brain thinks that there's a body part that is damaged. Now, sometimes your brain is correct, and sometimes it's not because your brain normally works in the conservative side. The next thing that I found was that pain is an output of the mind, not the body. If you feel pain, it's because your brain sends a pain signal. So if you have a body part that is damaged, the nerve ending sends a warning signal to your brain, and then your brain processes that information, and then decides whether it is useful or not to feel pain in order to protect the body. Your brain takes a lot of things into consideration, like emotions, past experiences, traumas, future plans, and many other things. Like for, and then because of that, each brain is different, and because of that, pain is not an accurate measurement of how damaged the body is. Like, for example, if you have a basketball player and a soccer player, and both, both break their wrist, the basketball player has the potential to feel more pain because the wrist is related to his emotion and future plans or like the example of the phantom limb pain, when you have a patient that has a missing body part but still feels pain in that missing body part. The way they fix that sometimes, the way they cure that is by putting the good arm in a box full of mirrors to make it look like he has two good arms. And then the brain stops sending that pain signal. Another thing what I found is that stress can potentially feel, make you feel more, more pain. So stress can affect the pain modulators. So if you are in pain and then you're stressed on top of that, you can potentially feel more pain. And lastly, I found out that pain, the longer you feel pain, the easier it is to feel pain. So the more you activate certain neural pathways, the easier it is to activate those neural pathways. And the same thing that happens with habits and skills. So in a way, when I was a kid, I was constantly wiring my brain to be stressed, to be in anxiety, to feel in pain. Until I was in that mountain in Spain, when I started telling myself that I was strong, I was actually wiring my brain to feel strong. And that was, that was why it was so powerful. Soon after I got home, I got invited to a project called Pedal South. The plan was to ride our bicycles from Alaska to Argentina over the course of 21 months. The plan was to ride our bicycles 14,000 miles from the top of the world to the bottom of the world. And right away, we started pre-production, and it took Many, many, many months. And out of the blue, six months before we had to leave, I got another pinched nerve on my back. But this time is worse. This time is really bad. This time is so bad 
that the pain, I can't even sleep. And this time it's so painful that I can't walk at all for weeks. And that completely broke me down. Broke me down mentally, physically, emotionally. I literally felt how my heart and my spirit broke apart. And I know maybe a pinched nerve is not a big deal, but it is to me because for a really long time, that has been my Achilles heel. And in my head, I had done everything that I needed to do to get better. I sold everything that I had. I gave away my clothes. I walked across Spain. And none of that was enough. Not only was not enough, I was in a worse place than I was before. And so I was in darkness for a long time. I have never felt so hopeless. I have never felt so lost. The depression got so bad that I ended up calling my mom. It was the first time that I called my mom since I left home for her help. She came live with me for a while. And as soon as she saw me, she realized how bad the situation was. She said that she has never seen me like that before. She said that it seemed like I gave up. And I did. I gave up. I felt like I got knocked down and I couldn't find a way to get back up. Slowly, the pain started going away, but it didn't really matter because I was still broken mentally. One day, my mom got tired of me feeling sorry for myself and said to me, Ricardo, my son is not a coward, so you're not going to tell me that a stupid back pain is going to knock you down. And so right away, I snapped. I realized that I'd forgotten what I learned in Spain. I, I realized that I'd forgotten that I could rewire my brain. And so I started focusing not on how weak I was, but how strong I could be. Not on how lost I felt, but on how much purpose I could have. Not on the fact that I lost a way, but I'm creating a way. I started getting stronger physically, but more important, I started getting stronger mentally. The negative thoughts were not appearing in my mind anymore. I was rewiring my brain. My family started getting really worried about me because they didn't think I was going to be strong enough to cycle across the two continents. They thought that my back was going to give up at a certain point. They reminded me that not too long ago, I could not even walk. But I didn't pay any attention because before I walked Spain, I was in almost in the same situation. So before I knew it, it was June 11, 2014, the day that we had to fly to Alaska, and I was ready. So I did ride my bicycle from Alaska to Argentina over the course of 21 months. I did ride my bicycle 14,000 miles from the Arctic Ocean to the Antarctic Ocean. Pedal South pushed me beyond what I thought it was possible. And there was no way to describe how beautiful and hard it was. It literally felt like I was ripped apart and put back together anew. During that time, I got to learn that we get to decide whether pain is going to push us down or push us forward. I even got to learn to love the grind and the hustle. I got to learn to love the times that I was cold, hungry, and exhausted. Even the times that I thought I was not going to finish the trip. I got to learn to love the times that I almost gave up and the times that I actually did. I got to learn to love the times where I, had, where I thought I had nothing else to give when I actually did. Because during those moments, I got to know myself. Because pain helped me conquer myself. You see, sometimes brokenness is necessary. Sometimes we have to experience complete hopelessness because only then do we get to realize how strong we can be. Thank you.